Hello again. Um, I thought I'd read you something today, something of mine. It's later in the afternoon and I've, um, I've done my, <laughs> I've done some words on my novel and uh, all the rest of my stuff. And Socks is fast asleep on my lap, of course. And I thought I'd read something from about five years ago. I did this tiny edition in 2019 of some poems. It's a kind of handmade tiny book in a tiny edition called the Bernard Socks Poems uh, with little drawings throughout. There was only about 100 copies of these, but I'm really proud of it. And it was the first time I had a book out that was all poems and pictures. I'll read some of them out. Okay, you listening, Socks? Z has twitched. Socks in the evening. Our guests are gone now, so I'm sitting still. While they were here, I listened to every word they said. A lot of it was dull. Someone ruffled up my hairdo, and I didn't mind that too much. Our guests are gone now, and so now it's just me and my boys. As the house settles down with creaking pipes, it must be time soon for a little bite, for something to crunch on. Our guests are gone, and the great heavy darkness comes down, all smelling of night, excitements, and the little door flaps, calling me out to play. But now our guests have gone, and the house is so comfy and warm. Socks in the morning. Me, me, me. Thud, 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 thud. Me, me, me. Pad, 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 pad. Chew, chew, chew. I woke him up at five, six, and seven, just before it gets light. I know he hates to waste the day. Me, 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 me. At eight, nine, ten, I call him again and race down the stairs. Me, me, me. Thud, thud, thud. Pad, pad, pad. Put a favourite record on. Get the day started. It's another day. They're doing another day for us. And you're getting to share it with me, me, me. Defending the realm. Did you see me? Did you hear me? I was yelling fit to burst. My tails flared up. Look, in a fabulous, furious display. That wicked creature. That oh-so-demure and vicious neighbour of ours, what's he called? He's been round the bottom of our garden again, skulking fluffily and trying to be friends. I saw him off. Don't you worry. I hissed and howled, but I didn't get too close. Them fluffy, demure ones, they can go mental on you. Anyhow, I'm coming in now for dreamies. Ah, uh, Socks remembers the rescue place. I belonged to a family of seven, all tall, strong boys, a solid wall of tuxedo muscle and fur, like a team of bouncers vying and nudging and butting heads. When the couple who took us as kittens split up and went their separate ways, they put us in the rescue place. We got divided. Three twos and one who wasn't really close to anyone. Two pairs that wouldn't be parted, who slept clasped in each other's big paws. Me and Felix, we weren't that close. But I was happier having company in the rescue place, as we waited for our new lives to come calling. The place was very crowded. I couldn't lie at full stretch. My legs ached. Those cells were made for smaller cats than us. At night, when the ladies went home, we'd howl and screech to let each other know we're still here, we're still together in the same place, the rescue place, the seven black and white brothers. Some of the smaller, unfamiliar cats would climb and scramble through gaps, visiting all our small cells. Sometimes there was scuffle and spats. It was strange, exciting coming and going a kind of place, and the months went by, and the months went by. 
I watched my brothers carried off one by one, pushing my nose against the window, trying to peer round to see who was taking them and where they were going, wondering and shouting and wondering out loud as the weeks went by and the weeks went by. When was it my turn and what would happen then? There he is. Lying on you. I lie on your legs all day, across your knees. Don't move, don't budge an inch. Just worry about squashing me, staying awake, fretting that I've drowned in duvet. Just don't you dare budge an inch, or the cat alarm will go off. It's not for my benefit that I do this. What I'm actually doing is weighing you down, keeping you in place, making sure you stay where you ought to all night. Didn't you know? With the windows open on nights like this, human beings can float away if you don't pin them down. I've seen it happen before. I've known humans to simply waft away. The cool night winds come into the room and they lift you up and steal you away. You'd be floating off outside through the busy skies, so I have to lie here, heavy on your legs, like shackles of muscle and fur and claws, snoring loudly, then waking and opening both eyes to check that you haven't budged an inch in the night. I'll not read the whole book. I'll skip a few. Socks and Other Cats All the cats do la passeggiata, like they have done for so many years, pulsing and flowing down the street, the kittens from down the end, Walter with his villainous moustache, Missy and Tony the killing machines, Fang delirious with flomping down and wriggling always looking for love. Others from much further back and longer ago, long gone, I can see them passing between hedges and alleyways, Three-legged Freddy with the matted fur, turning in circles, stinky and lost. Whisper the Siamese with the enormous voice. Smokey, who is huge and faded grey, the grandad under the chestnut trees, guarding us all and passing on law. Corky, who was lanky and gawky, Bessie, who had balls and was sly, and elderly Scooby, who takes the evening air carefully watching Rowan hunting in brambles while Momo dozes on her green bench. All of them pad through the new cherry blossom. Little Barry comes back briefly to yowl at the cat mint and fall asleep in a pot. And there's Festa, of course, a nimble phantom much smaller than me, Elvis snarl, scratchy paws. He's always in this house looking out of these windows with me. <laughs> there he is, it sucks. Couple more and I'll stop. Socks is a good cat. All the neighbor's cats drink gin. It's true. They say it's neat gin. They think it is slow. Call it gourmet. Think themselves fancy. They're still pie-eyed by sunrise. All the neighbours' cats smoke fags. That's them, puffing away in the undergrowth, tabbing their heads off, stinking their paws up, coughing like mad. How do they manage to inhale or strike matches? But they do. All the neighbours' cats commit murder without thinking or blinking. All the neighbours' cats get sexy. It's revolting. Everyone's wriggling and giggling, spraggling and waggling, bums in the air. Everyone's shagging and gagging like mad. Boys and boys and girls and girls, especially the ambiguously gendered. They're the worst of the lot. They're all mad for it round here. Really, I'm quite shocked. Most of the time. But not me. I am a good cat. I am the best cat in the world. You know me. Butter wouldn't melt on my cold, wet nose. 
Bernard Sox is a poet. Paul, Paul, I've got an idea for another one of those poems I've been writing. Quick, quick, sit down. Here goes. Hang on. Now it's gone. Ah. Uh. Bernard Socks on Friday night. My favourite times go something like this. It's Friday night and nice enough to go out, if I feel like it, but mostly I'll stay indoors. I'll take a spot on lap after lap. I'll burrow myself into throws. I'll sit here, bumming up all the cushions. As they choose their sitcoms and their films and open their wine, I love to hear them laughing, and I try to get the jokes. Paul warms plates in the oven. Jeremy and Stephen drive down Kingsway, visit the Manchu Walk, come bustling back with funny, aromatic takeout bags. I sit at a, caref a careful cat attention in the sweet and spicy kitchen, feet pressed together at the head of the queue, waiting for ducky titbits. Friday night with visitors, Stuart, Erica, Nick and Shirley, Johnny and Rylan, or maybe Cheeto, the dog. I'll perch on all their laps and curl up listening as the humans laugh at their endless shows, loving all the night, the noise, till late on Friday night. Bernard Socks on Poetry Bernard Socks responds to criticism. I'm lying on his side of the bed all day long. I'm deliberately shedding hair and licking my asshole, absolutely furious. Jeremy didn't like my last poem as much, he said, as your previous work. Well, let it piss down all day. Let it piss on him smoking outside. What does he know anyway about poems? Bernard reflects on form and content. What I'm saying at the end of the day is that I'm a cat, and I guess that's the stuff I write about. It's going to reflect cat-type concerns, catty kind of stuff. And you might think my world is a narrow place. I think it's huge. And you might think it doesn't touch on wider themes. It does. And you might think my appreciation of poetic form, rhythm, metre, etc. is rudimentary. Ha! But this is what you get when you ask the cat what he thinks. Bernard Socks on editing. Revisiting poems is a bit like chewing your feet, teasing gravel chunks from between your toes, licking all your fur down so it lies smartly, smarming in the cat spit and chewing on your nipples. You have to check every line, taste it, give them a careful niff, 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 and see if they sit straight. Do they lie sleekly in the same direction? Can you twist your neck round and lick that bothersome idea perfectly into shape? Cats like being succinct. They don't hang around. Say what you gotta say and see you later, losers. Uh, final one. I'll skip to the end. Bernard Socks on Humankind. Sleepy Cat, are humans daft? Yep, humans are daft, all right. Humans are crazy. And there's the last drawing in the book. What do you think of that, Socks? Oh, he's not interested in the slightest. Oh, you going to say hello to everyone? Covering up the mic, he's not bothered at all. Anyway, oh, don't go socks. Psst, oh, no, he really thinks humans are crazy and dull, don't you? Come on. Anyway, thank you for listening, and I'll see you again in the next episode. Goodbye.